Social Studies World History 14. Analyze the Age of Revolutions. Examine absolutism through a comparison of the reigns of Louis XIV and Tsar Peter the Great. Peter the Great was born on June the 9th of 1672. In early life, Peter co-ruled Russia with his half-brother Ivan V. Though technically the first in line to inherit, Ivan was disabled and prone to sickness. So the two boys ruled as co-regents until Ivan's death in 1696. Initially, Peter's mother acted as regent for Peter and often advised him on state matters. This ended when Ivan's sister, who was also Peter's half-sister, attempted a political coup with the help of the army. She then replaced the regency of Peter's mom with one led by herself. Her input in court matters extended even so far as to having a hole cut into the back of the double throne shared by the boys. Princess Regent Sophia would sit behind the throne, listen to the discussions and debates, and then quietly advise the boys from behind the scene. Russia during the early reign of Peter was xenophobic, that is to say, highly resistant to change and outside influences. There was a pervasive lack of education across all levels of society. The government was unstable, and a strong individual such as a czar had traditionally served to maintain the order and to monitor and control the boyars, or Russian nobles. Similarly to France under Louis, the traditional nobility were often involved in power struggles with the czars. Another group that vied for authority were the Streltsky, or army, who often asserted their power to interfere in political matters. In 1696, Peter became the sole ruler and czar of Russia, following an oust of the Princess Regent Sophia, who had grown a bit too attached to the power of her position, and declined to surrender it voluntarily to Peter. Following the failed coup, Peter forced Sophia to enter a convent, where she gave up her name and her position as a member of the royal family. With his position secured, Peter set off the next year on a grand embassy, an 18-month exploratory tour of the capitals of Europe. He traveled with a 250-person entourage, composed of close advisors, a military honor guard, and several dwarves. Officially, Peter was incognito and traveled under the pseudonym of Peter Mikulkov. However, his height of 6'8 easily distinguished him and rendered his disguises useless. He formally met with the heads of France and Austria. Peter wanted to secure alliances with them in a joint attempt to limit the firm control of the Ottomans along Russia's southwestern borders. France expressed support for the Ottoman Sultan and the Austrian leader was mostly concerned with keeping things quiet to their east. Peter moved on to the Netherlands, where he took on an apprenticeship as a shipbuilder in Zandam. He wanted to learn about naval technology and to move Russia towards the creation of a modern navy. Peter went to work at the largest shipbuilding yard in the world. He spent four months at the wharf, which was owned by the Dutch East India Company in disguise. He acquired vast maritime knowledge and recruited and hired skilled workers, sailors, and lock builders. He also lured Cornelius Cruz, a high-ranking official in the Dutch Navy, to come to Russia. Cruz was appointed Vice Admiral for the Russian Navy and became Peter's longtime advisor and helped to birth the modern Russian Navy. From Holland, Peter traveled to England. He arrived in England on January the 11th, 1698, and left on April the 21st. His entourage included four chamberlains, three interpreters, two clocksmiths, a cook, a priest, six trumpeters, 70 soldiers as tall as their monarch, the same four dwarves, and a monkey. He met King William III, toured the cities of Oxford and Manchester, and learned about city planning. After England, Peter's entourage traveled to the cities of Leipzig, Dresden, and Vienna, and he met with the King of Poland, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, and Leopold I, the Holy Roman Emperor. Peter was heavily influenced by his tour, 
and returned to Russia convinced that his country needed to modernize along the European model. Upon his return, Peter announced new reforms. Nobles had to cut their beards or pay a tax. Anyone with a beard had to pay a tax of 100 rubles each year. Peasants and clergymen were excused, but if a peasant entered a city with a beard, he had to pay a fine. People who paid the tax were given a coin that read, The beard is a useless burden, to let the police know that they were legally allowed to have one. If they were caught without the coin, the police could forcibly shave them on the streets. Boyers had to adopt European clothing styles rather than wear their traditional robes. Pants became court fashion. The Russian calendar was also altered to better align with the European one. And one of the first things Peter did upon his return was to divorce his wife, Eudoxia Lupahina. He wanted to create a police state, which he defined as a well-ordered society with established laws. He created boards of ministers to handle the affairs of state, had schools constructed, and started a state-sponsored newspaper. Peter's dream of a modern Russia centered around the creation of a warm water seaport located on the Baltic Sea. The design of the city, which he named St. Petersburg, was to emulate the capitals of Western Europe. To construct his vision, Peter heavily taxed the nobility and forced the peasant class to construct the city. Approximately 30,000 peasants died during the process. To make sure he had enough stone, Peter made it illegal to build stone buildings anywhere in Russia other than at St. Petersburg. All stones, Peter demanded, were to be sent to the city. Like Louis and Versailles, Peter ordered nobles and craftsmen to move to the city to provide instant occupancy. By 1725, St. Petersburg had reached a population in the thousands, and Peter made the city the capital of the country. He was very happy with the results of his initiative, though many of his contemporaries considered the town to be artificially contrived and unattractive. Peter also enacted measures to limit the power of the Russian Orthodox Church. He removed the position of patriarch and replaced that position with a procurator, who was loyal to the Tsar. He then removed the second layer of church leadership and replaced them with a loyalist committee called the Holy Synod. Peter enacted mercantilist policies to increase economic stability. He altered the tax structure of Russia away from a land tax to a soul tax, which was an individual income tax, and funneled 75% of his new revenue stream into building a strong military. Peter created a standing army of 210,000 soldiers, with conscripted peasants as foot soldiers and nobility as officers, and established the Russian Navy. Following this massive buildup of forces, Peter waged a successful 21-year war against Sweden, Poland, and Denmark called the Great Northern War. In 1721, Peter abandoned the traditional Russian title of Tsar in favor of the European influence title of Emperor. He died at the age of 52 in 1725 and was succeeded by his second wife, Catherine. During his reign, he transformed Russia into a European-style state and military power. Though he attempted a mass transformation of Russia, his Western policies were most effective among the upper classes of Russian society. Both Louis XIV and Peter I sought to create an absolute estate with themselves as the undisputed head. Through their policies of military expansion and targeted economic growth, these men forcefully expanded the influence of their nations. And through their policies and actions, they irrevocably altered the religious and cultural bases of their nations. <music>